gets a hot war. It's nerve-wracking the entire time. We hope we never have to do it. But that's part of our job, I guess, is to uh, just be ready, Re really ready for anything. Air Force fighters scramble into the nation's skies, ready to shoot down a hijacked civilian jetliner. It's the last line of defense against another suicide attack by terrorists. In the wake of 9-11, armed U.S. Air Force fighters stand alert, ready to respond at a moment's notice from bases inside the continental United States, Alaska, and southern Canada. It is true that this is the force of last resort. This is something that we have found totally unthinkable in the past. But we think about it uh, and think about it in detail today. CBS 11 is the first news team allowed wide access to combat air patrol operations. Langley Air Force Base on Virginia's Atlantic coast is one of dozens of launch points for the Homeland Air Defense Mission called Operation Noble Eagle. Lieutenant James Morgan and Major Brian Geenap of the 71st Fighter Squadron, known as the Iron Men, now think about doing the unthinkable. If we are given the order, it's the right order, and for the right reason, and we'll do it. For me personally, uh, my faith in God goes well above that. Give way to fight up two F-15s taxing westbound on Alpha. Texas. Photojournalist Manuel Viella and I rode in the back seats of F-15s. 27.4 two. Two the mission took us over New York City. I'm at 428, climb and maintain flight level 310. The president was speaking to the United Nations. Use the 1201, reduce speed to Fighters routinely cover presidential appearances and high profile events. The pilots stay aloft for up to six hours. Two zero, I'm going to have uh, seven two just to have... It requires air-to-air -air refueling. Flying with live weapons is stressful, especially when trying to intercept a target in heavy air traffic. Sometimes we have minutes or hours to deal with a situation, and sometimes we have seconds to deal with it. CBS 11 went inside the secretive world of air defenders at Tyndall Air Force Base in the Florida Panhandle. As I look at these radar scopes, this looks like an anthill that's been stirred up with all this. Well, we have, in, in the southeast United States, we have uh, 2,000 tracks a day. Until 9-11, the Air Force only looked for attacks outside U.S. borders. Airbus 319. Now, along with the FAA, it watches inside U.S. airspace. Well, the intercept starts right here in this seat. Yes. I'm the one that starts the intercept that scrambles the fighters. The TOI is pretty much north. Major Sharon Nairings of the Florida Air National Guard focuses on a 30-mile ring of restricted airspace over the president's campaign rallies in Florida. Bullseye 090 for 30. Suddenly, an aircraft violates the airspace. Yes, you're clear to intercept headbutt. This is uh, one of our fighters, and he's going to fly up to this general area. As he's flying up there, he's got his radar looking. Nairing's call alerts a chain of command that goes up to the Pentagon and White House. Now he'll see that airplane, and he'll see that airplane, and we'll continue to tell him, no, it's not those two airplanes, it's an airplane that we see here. Fighters weave through the crowded airspace with the live weapons to make visual contact. The intruder turns out to be the careless pilot of a small private plane. Fighters escorted away. More than 38,000 air defense missions have been flown without incident. And believe me, we practice this over and over again to know what it takes to try to give uh, an airborne object a chance to comply with instructions. We wait till the last possible minute, but we're not going to have a recurrence of September 11, 2001. The American public won't stand for it, and the United States military is on guard to protect American citizens. Robert Riggs, CBS 11 News.